Hey guys, it's me Chill here with the Red Dead Redemption 2 video. Today's challenge, however, will be different than the last two, and you may wonder why. Well, if you're wondering why, it's because you're illiterate and can't read the title, but I'll help you guys out. Today, I will be beating the entire story of Red Dead Redemption 2, but with a twist. I can only use the Cattleman Revolver, and I'm not allowed to use Deadeye. The Cattleman Revolver is the starting gun, and Deadeye is the ability that allows Arthur to become overpowered and slow down time. To break it to you guys, there are several parts of the game that force you to use different guns or Deadeye, but for the sake of the video, I'll be ignoring those. If you want to help the channel out, kidnap the top world powers and hold them for ransom. However, instead of asking them for money, ask for everyone to subscribe to Chili Cheesecake because it really does help the channel. So the first chapter of the game is relatively slow paced. However, before I go much further, I need to let the illiterate lot of you know that this playthrough obviously contains spoilers. If you want to play the game, I'll give you some time to go click off the video now. Alright, with that out of the way, we can get on with the challenge. When you start the game, you're playing as Arthur and are currently running away from the law in the mountains. After a robbery went wrong, the gang you're a part of, the Vander Lynn gang, needed to make a run for it. So with the Pinkertons behind us, these next five missions will be spent mostly just recovering and preparing to continue our escape. The first mission has pitted us against the O'Driscolls, a bunch of scallywags who are a rival gang of the Vander Lynn family. Obviously, I brutally murdered them and had a scuff with one of them in the barn. After beating the hell out of him, we find one of the people who lived in the house whose name is Sadie Adler. After bringing her house down for fun because everyone enjoys a bit of a laugh committing arson, I had to go save John in the mountains. Easy enough, we followed the trail to him and find he was attacked by chihuahuas. He has a bit of a scratch on his face and the chihuahuas that did this came back to eat us. Well, actually, wolves decided to attack us, which are honestly preferable to demon ankle biters. Everyone is always afraid of pit bulls, but the ones you really need to be afraid of are the chihuahuas. Spawn is Satan. I can say that because I own one and he is a dick. Anyways, after putting down all the dogs and not with injection or gas, it turns out we need to go hunting. Charles, the man I'm hunting with, wants me to use a bow, but I blatantly ignore him using the cattleman. Something I do want to mention is that when I first played Chapter 1, I was only going to do a No Dead Eye challenge, which would obviously be too easy, so after Chapter 1, I played with the official challenge, but came back and replayed Chapter 1. Anyways, after bringing back the deer, we had to go hunt down the O'Driscolls. We found their camp array then, which was successful. Not sure what to say, that's funny in the slightest, it was a pretty boring part of the story. They were playing the robber's train, but we stole the plans and did it ourselves and fucked up. I almost ran out of ammo, but during this mission, you were given infinite ammo, something that is unique to this mission. After robbing the train, we moved camps to a place Place near Valentine. An hour and a half into the game, this is the first time you're allowed to leave the camp and play freely. Obviously, the first thing I did was shave, as hygiene is an important part of life. That would be an extremely smooth transition for a sponsorship like Dollar Shave Club, but for obvious reasons, that ain't happening anytime soon. After a quick shave, I started grinding missions. It took me 30 hours to complete this challenge, and without monetization, that doesn't pay itself off. Some may say it's enjoyable, but let me tell you, this challenge is pure agony. I'd rather listen to Baby Shark for 10 hours on repeat, because at least then my hands are free to kill myself. Anyways, after complaining about this taking forever, I'm beginning to realize why. I have 30 minutes of footage of me throwing the reverend off the bridge over and over and over again. Hell, a questionable decision on my part, but no need to cry over spilled milk. After a few redundant missions with no real fighting involved, I found myself threatening to cut a man's nuts off with flaming hot tongs. An O'Driscoll named Kieran we kidnapped earlier, who I forgot to mention is about to lead us to one of his gang's hideouts. After raiding it, the bloke saved me, questionable since I was about to cut his nuts off a bit ago, but appreciate all the same. After getting the money from the chimney, I earned a cool $100. I didn't choose the thug life, the thug life chose me. After blowing my money in town and leaving me with the exact amount of money in my wallet currently, I continued doing missions. The next mission I discovered Micah had gotten in trouble and immediately went and helped him. So like I went and got hammered at the saloon. Although not relevant to the challenge, I wanted to throw it in. It's easily my favorite mission in the entire game. Something about going from dancing to pissing behind the saloon is really immersive. After waking up in the middle of nowhere, I found a horse who I named Big D the sequel, after my other horse who was apparently named Big D. I thought of other hilarious games, but as you can tell by the profanity check, they were too good and broke the game. The next two missions I saved Sean and Micah from custody. Both were pretty easy and the only hiccup was the stealth part during saving Sean. I eventually just pistol whipped them and moved on them. When I got back, the gang threw a party and I drank enough alcohol to kill a chihuahua. Although if I'm being honest, I doubt that would even be enough to kill the wretched bastards. When I woke up, I was an absolute asshole, although with how much I drank, luckily that was the only thing that happened. John was a bitch and kicked me out, which was fine, I had stuff to do anyways. I did a few more missions, none that were really important, until that is, Big D, the sequel walked off a cliff. His death may be the most tragic thing to happen all year, even worse than Mr. Hat's death in my Crouch Cross the Map Challenge. Quickly moving on, I stole a new horse who I named Little D. I was still salty about Big D's death and I took it on my new horse. Oddly enough, Little D never died and served much better than both Big D's, so that just goes to show Little D's can be better sometimes. I also bought a second revolver, which I wouldn't use for a while, but still good to have. 
When I went back to camp, I had a letter from an ex-girlfriend. This sent Arthur into a spiral of emotions, and I spent the rest of the night gambling. I won all the money back at the end, and after busting out several times, so I'd say a successful night of grieving. Eventually, I did go talk to her and helped her get her little brother out of a coal. This leads me on to a side quest during this challenge, keeping good honor. Honor is a system that essentially rewards you for good actions and the opposite for bad actions. I had to make sure to end the game with good karma, which meant I also had to do a lot of side missions. So if we skip ahead a bit, nothing crazy besides I was forced to use a sniper rifle happened. Nobody was killed however, so it didn't really matter. Skipping even further ahead, we got into a gunfight with the entirety of Valentine. After committing a bit of casual genocide, we had to move camps further east. A short gunfight later, some immigrants end up giving us some gold and we are now stationed in Clements Point, where one of the longest chapters of the game commences. This is the equivalent of Florida and Red Dead and everyone here is crazy. The locals, the authorities, and the major plantation houses are at war with each other. Inbred racists, ex-confederates, and the absolute nuts locals in general is pretty much exactly like Florida. To keep this video from being too long, I'll sum up this chapter pretty quickly. Nothing major happens and there aren't any major instances that require me to break the rules. When we arrived, we started trying to play both sides of the plantation battle. We robbed both while pretending to help both. It didn't take too long for the families to catch on to our antics, however, which resulted in the genocide of both families. Good fun if you ask me, but the reason I'm not going to really go into specific is this chapter took 9 hours to complete. And that's just pure gameplay. Anyways, the Braithwaites, one of the families we murdered, stole little Jack, so the next chapter started with us getting him back. After a rage-inducing mission involving a graveyard, we had a party which yet again results in heavy drinking on my end. After the party, we got invited to another party. Arthur is becoming quite the party goer. Here we picked up several tips for some fun-filled robberies which we would have fun with. One of these was the riverboat job. As seen earlier, I'm an extremely skilled poker player so I'd be going to a high-stakes poker game. After freshening up my Shermai Accord in Chapter 3 and buying some flashy clothes, I made my way onto the boat. Right off the bat, they take your guns which represents an issue. There aren't any actual cattleman revolvers you could pick up on the boat, no matter how hard I tried, and trust me, I spent a good amount of time trying, which meant I would have to damage control. Unfortunately, I can only kill a few people and not all of them. Top 10 sadest moments in anime history, here I come. After winning the poker game, we robbed the safe, but I was forced to use Deadeye by the game, although I did shoot him in the kneecap. Honestly, if he died to that, it's not really my fault. After looting the safe, we headed downstairs to blend in. Obviously, this didn't work, but it was worth a shot. Since there's not any cattleman revolvers on the boat, I decided that the showfield revolver would have to work, since it's the closest thing. Eventually, I found the simplest way to avoid killing loads of people and escape the boat. This job was easily the most scuffed job yet, but that's alright. It's all downhill from here. When I got back to camp, I could tell Christmas cheer was in the air. Kieran's dead body walks in the camp, which I will say is a lovely decoration this time of year. We were being raided by the O'Driscolls, and after a quick gunfight, it became clear we needed to hurry up and get out. The next robbery on the list was a railway station, and after restarting because I had the wrong pistol, the fight began. On the trolley, the game forces you to use a different revolver, which would be unacceptable. However, you have to shoot, so I shot a horse's foot, which stopped the rider. When the trolley crashed, I finally could use the cowman and committed some more lighthearted genocide. If you can't just sit down and enjoy committing terrible crimes, then are you really living? I'd say not, I killed as many people as possible on the way out. The station had almost no money, which made Dutch really angry. It was clear that we'd been set up, so we went to confront the man who did this, Angelo Bronte. After some lovely swamp walking and almost getting eaten alive, we raided his mansion from the water. At this point in the playthrough, it's already been 22 hours and I've perfected the art of killing. I was still getting used to the dual wielding, but with 30 bullets I could kill 31 men. Sure, aim assist had a big part of this, but we'll ignore that. Console gaming sucks without aim assist. After making a brisk escape, Bronte and Dutch have a chat, eventually leading to Dutch feeding Bronte to an alligator. Festive, I will say, however, Dutch wasting perfectly good meat is uncalled for. Dutch really needs to think ahead. Dutch decided we were going to go to Tahiti, but we needed more money. Obviously, this involves robbing a bank, because what could possibly go wrong? So a lot went wrong. We had to hide in an abandoned building, and eventually sneak onto a boat to escape the Pinkertons who were hunting us down. Obviously, this isn't ideal, but since I was able to pass with only a cattleman revolver, it worked for me. The original plan was to go to Tahiti, but long story short, our boat wrecked, and now we had to escape Guarma. This is the beginning of Chapter 5, and although the shortest chapter yet, it is also the most difficult. Arthur loses all his pimped out gear, and Little D isn't here, so things don't look like they can get much worse. Obviously, since I said this, they get much worse and we're suddenly prisoners. Not ideal, but nothing is, so this seems to be the new norm. Eventually, a load of rebels break us free, and I'm handed a cattleman revolver. On this island, everyone uses these at first, so there isn't an issue getting the weapon in the first place. However, once we reach the main battleground, you're given a rifle and expected to use that. Obviously, I can't, and I have to use a revolver. This shouldn't be too much of an issue, except for the fact that all the revolver ammo decided to pull the most elaborate disappearing act and fuck off. I made it through the mission and found a bit of ammo, but throughout the entire chapter this would be a reoccurring theme. The next mission I had to free the workers and I was constantly low on ammo, and finished the encounter with two bullets to my name. Ouch. I then took on the main compound after finding 12 more bullets where we had to save Javier. 
However, Dutch decided to get a bit too physical, choking her when she wanted more money. Oh, although a good bit of banter is always good fun, we decided that we have work to do and blow up a sugar refinery. After rescuing Javier, we have to make a break for it where I have to cover the retreat. Not the best plan, however, since I literally have zero fucking bullets, but Dutch and Javier run off, leaving me to have fun. After chasing around some of the enemies, tackling them and beating with my pistol, I'm shot, which sucks. Actually, I take that back. I respawn with ammo and was able to easily put the rest of them down. Honestly, this gameplay makes me look good until you remember that I only play solo games because I suck at gaming. So apparently this situation is escalating quickly and we have to now kill literal warships, stop invading armies, and I can piss harder than this gun shoots. After a long drawn out battle where I have to use cannons and deadeye in several unskippable or unavoidable sequences, we finally escaped Gwarma. So the final chapter begins. Chapter 6 is a pretty long chapter. If you made it this far, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend to spread the word. Anyways, I sneak on shore and ride back to camp to find out where everyone has gone. When I get back to camp, I read a note that says subscribe to Chilla Cheesecake or you will catch Ligma. Oddly specific, but I'd say listen up. Rockstar knows what they're talking about. After reading this, some bad guys show up who I kill without remorse. Isn't it ironic how they're the bad guys, but I've killed literally hundreds of people without thought? No, not really. I don't put pineapple on pizza, which makes me more important than everyone else. I meet up with the rest of the gang afterwards and get into a massive gunfight. Something I'd like to point out is I was able to deactivate Deadeye, shoot the Gatling gun, kill the rest without using the Gatling gun, all without dying. I know I said I wasn't that good, but I think it might be going pro. Send me a contract phase, I'll be waiting. So Charles and I go find a new place to call home, since that one obviously won't work anymore, and go kill some savages. At this point, I've mastered the dual wielding technique and learned frantically pulling the trigger works really well. Everyone moves into the new camp and all is happy. Obviously a lie, the end of the game is intense and drawn out, so to skim through it, we save John from prison, we get in trouble with the army, get in more trouble with the Pinkertons, I blow up a bridge with John, and most importantly, I go rob a gold train. For being honest, this is one of the coolest things I've seen just randomly. I was fast traveling and noticed it popped up and decided to explore. After finding it, I tried to access it from the bottom and found some jewelry, but nothing crazy. However, after climbing and dying enough times to make chihuahuas seem like golden retrievers, I eventually got in the main car. I found two gold bars and some other cool stuff, but most importantly, I can pimp out my ride. At this point, my mustache is top quality, and after riding around for a bit, I'd like to introduce Huge D. Although Little D will always be remembered, Huge D is absolutely pimped. I should have gotten this whip ages ago, anyways with my foreign whip I rode back to finish the game. When I got back to camp we had to go help the native americans raid the refinery. After a lit battle I get abandoned but Eagle Fly saves me. He gets shot and I carry him to his father. After leaving Eagle Flies I head back to camp. So it turns out Dutch has one more plan, a train robbery. Obviously we suck at train robberies so this doesn't go down well and we're forced to scramble and rob the train. After being forced into this gatling gun sequence the train goes boom, we get money, John gets lost again and we head back to camp. Apparently Abigail has been kidnapped and Sadie and I go save her learning Micah was a snitch. And as we all know snitches get stitches. <laughs> Arthur walked into camp and announced that Micah was a tattletale. Obviously this led to a standoff until the Pinkertons showed up. The rest of the gang abandoned John and I as we made our escape through the cave. As we exited the caves however the rest of the gang started chasing us down to try and kill us. Assholes. As John and I made our desperate escape, I was given a choice between going back for the money or helping John escape. As I said, I want to end with good honor, so I helped John because I'm sure not helping John results in a plunge of honor similar to the stock market back in 1929. Holding off the Pinkertons so John can escape and be with his family, Arthur gets jumped by Micah as we brawl. Eventually Dutch steps in and says to apologize, but obviously I ain't no bitch so I say not nah and rather die. Looking over the rising sun, we finally bring this challenge to a close. If you stuck around this long, make sure to comment and gang so I know that you made it to the end. This video, as I said before, took 30 hours just to record gameplay, which is obviously a lot. So make sure to subscribe and share the channel with a friend. I plan on having one more video out before the end of the year, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Anyways, I hope you all have a good holiday, and don't forget to smash that like button.